Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm with Cardiff Union TV. This morning, we had an amazing opportunity to go to the Welsh Rugby Union press conference in the Vale Resort. The Welsh international defence coach, Sean Edwards, was there to give his opinions on the game on Saturday against Australia and to give us his look ahead at the game against Georgia coming up. Here's what he had to say. Sean, what's your reaction to the news about Jonathan Davis? Well, obviously, incredibly upset for the player. You know, this is probably third really, really big injury in the last three or four years. Um, my thoughts are obviously with him, mostly. Uh, wish him a speedy recovery, etc. Um, probably one of the form, if not the form, 13 in world rugby. Um, I'm going to take some replacing there. Absolutely. How do you see your options now in the uh, 13 position? Well, we'll just have to look that over that over the next, you know, three games, and then, and obviously the uh, Six Nations. Uh, you know, it's going to be okay for, you know, this time next year and building up to the World Cup, and you know, we are in that two-year cycle towards the World Cup, um, and, you know, the last World Cup was a great example of sometimes you're going to get injuries and you just have to get over it, and you know, we was in the toughest group there's ever been in the last World Cup, and we had a horrific injury list. You know, people falling down left, right, and centre, and we still got through it. So we have to show a bit of resilience as well. That would that was shown in the past. In the short term, though, most of the centres you've got, I think it's fair to say, are, are more naturally twelves than thirteens. Yeah, that that would be a, that would be a, um, a correct point, I'd say. But uh, obviously, twelve and thirteen, you know, prefer position twelve. But obviously, I'm sure they put their hand up to play thirteen. Looking at uh, players who missed. Last Saturday's game through injury. Can you give us an update on Reese Webb, Justin Tiprick, and Samson Lee? Um, well, we're all just still waiting, really. We haven't named the team yet, obviously, and uh, you know the team will be named on. We'll give them as long as possible, um, hoping for some of them to return. But obviously, that's in the hands of the medics. Which of them is taking part in training at the moment? They're all taking part. They're all taking part. In, in some sort of training, yeah. What about the extent of the changes overall? Long Gatlin said there would be changes, so we talking six, ten, fifteen. You know what? Um, you know, most of the selection is left up to Warren, um, Robin, and um, and Oilers, obviously. Um, they're priority selectors. I think there will be changes, definitely, because as I just said, you know, you have to have people ready, not coming in to play the first test match. Um, if it happens in World Cup year or if it happens in the Six Nations. So to get that sort of experience would be absolutely usually beneficial against, let's be honest, you know, a, a pretty strong team we were playing on, on Saturday, particularly, you know, up front and the forwards. Yeah, looking at Georgia, scoring six tries against uh, Canada, three of them rumbles, one of them a spectacular from halfway. Uh, what did you make of them in your analysis so far? Well, like I say, you know, the driven line, it's definitely a huge strength of theirs and it's somewhat what we was... Uh, we were left wanting a weekend, really. Um, I'm sure that you know Robin and, uh, and Warren have been working very hard and on uh, correcting that, um, you know, our driven line out defence because that it is a huge threat of of theirs, obviously as well. But you know, there's a little bit more to them than that. You know, everybody knows the you know they have a big pack, good scrum, good driven line out. But you know the, the number ten is very creative. The number twelve is a, is a real handful to getting them over the advantage line. Uh, and they're very, very dangerous in kit return. So, um, so, so we'll be on our guard, and we've been working. We had a really good training session today, and uh, we, you know, we're obviously, we can't wait for Saturday. There is just some danger, isn't there? Because the public perceive this as the fourth international, the time when you make a lot of changes. For Georgia, it's probably their, one of their games of the year, isn't it? Well, it's just the biggest game for ten years, I think. You know, it's probably outside of World Cups. Uh, because you know they're fighting desperately for Six Nations entry, and uh, they know that uh, you know a good performance against Wales um, will put them in uh, and put them in good stead, I presume. How close do you think they are to the standard of Six Nations from what you've seen? So um, I'm not sure about that. Um, I haven't seen them against high quality opposition enough times. Sure, how did you assess Wales' defensive performance? Well, it's a first. Time, we missed two tackles in the whole game out of over 100, and for some way we, we conceded four tries. Three of them 
Lidl and one of them, let's say, on review, um, potentially not Lidl. Um, I was a little bit confused why the Alan Namos decision, which was over the trial line, was reviewed absolutely thoroughly. But the Kurt Beal decision was, was reviewed very, very quickly, which I think in hindsight of, you know, impe of, uh, how can I say, uh, options he could have gone to uh, regarding, you know, the vision, uh, the angles, etc. I was a little bit confused. Also the fact that Kurt Beal did an immediate drop goal, it's a little bit of a giveaway that potentially he might have dropped the ball. So I'm not saying I'm disappointed, I'm not angry, I'm confused why it didn't take longer over the decision, the TMO. Is that something you've raised it? I'm sure Warren will be raising it with it because if that had been on the trial line, which basically it ended up really being because he just picked the ball up and run because no one, you know, really, it was a steal, you know, of all steals, wasn't it? But when you watch the, I'm told on BBC, it was a clearly knock on. You talked last week about the challenge you have to, to coach with new players coming in. Yeah. Um, in that regard, how big a loss is John Davis and how much work have you Yeah, it's a massive there? loss, yeah, there's no doubt about that. And uh, his big shoes to fill, there's no doubt about it. I've got a lot to work to do over the next three weeks and three to six nations because he's, uh, you know, he's, I'm not saying he's irreplaceable, but he's, uh, he'd be one of the, definitely one of the one positions you you at least want to want to lose. You know, we're all bought into this new way of playing. Um, hopefully, by did it put pressure on our, our defence at weekend? Of course, it did. We lost the ball eleven times in our own half, right? which is a lot. But going forward, will that be addressed with more practice? Of course, it will. Yeah, you know, I'm sure we, uh, Jenks will sort out you know our kick exit strategies, etc. We're working on them this morning. And but we've all bought into it, you know, into this new way of playing. And I'm sure, come the you know, certainly by the last two couple of games in this competition, and in the Six Nations, we'll get that balance right. Is it? Did it put pressure on our defence at weekend? Of course it did. Yeah, but I actually thought I've never ever had coached a team who's only missed two tackles out of hundred, hundred and ten. It actually it was. And concede four tries. It was, yeah. And we have to work on our driven line at descent. There's no doubt about that. A little bit, a little bit disappointed just before half time. We obviously lost the ball twice quickly on the trot. We had a big set to deliver just before half time. I don't know if it was fatigue, what it was, but we didn't quite deliver on that set, and that was the most disappointing thing for me. Everything else, I thought it was very encouraging. You know, the way tries are going in at World Rugby at the moment is, you know, they're going left, right, centre, aren't they? So, two out of 110 must be pretty pleased. Sorry? Those numbers you mentioned, they need to be pretty pleased. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously that wasn't the issue. We just got outflanked on two occasions and driven line out, and as I said, the Kirtley Beale try. So, having said we're not playing together for seven months, I thought it was a decent effort, really. We can't, we can't give in. Sam, yeah, down to Sam against Scotland a few years ago. I think it was Scotland or Italy. Yeah, it's uh, it's just it's the way it goes sometimes, isn't it? You know, if we kick the ball out, that's don't give a, doesn't give a good picture, does it? You know, <clears throat> we always want to play it to the last second. But system. unbelievably disappointing, yeah. Sorry, sir. In terms of system, you're picking tens or twelve. Does that make it easier to pick a twelve or thirteen? Um, potentially, that's, that's probably a good point. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, said to, I said to Owen before the game. You know, he's a very meticulous lad. Owen, he, he does his own work on the computers. He's looking at every different aspect of the of the opposition's attack, etc. And 
he went through it, you know, studied it diligently. And I said, on top of that, mate, you've got to do one thing. You've got to be incredibly brave on Saturday because these big guys are going to be running at you. It's on top of all the technical stuff, and he was, certainly was that. He, uh, he muscled up in the right areas. I thought uh, both second rows were outstanding in defence. Um, but certainly Owen, you know, he's not the biggest in stature compared to the two lads he was playing against the weekend. And uh, as I said, he, uh, he certainly showed the bravery that was needed to be a, a Test match player. Sure, is there a to give Owen the run of the game so he kind of bends in at that 12 um, you'd have to ask uh, Rob about that. I mean, obviously, the more games he plays, is you know that's it's, it's good for him. Um, but you know, Scott Williams is um, and uh, Jamie's in the squad now, so there's a bit of competition for that position. As you said, one of them may have to move to 13, which is uh, it's probably going to have to happen. But also, you've got I thought um, Owen did very very well when he came on. Owen Watkins, I thought he was I thought he looked he looked. He looked very dangerous. He put a fantastic tackle in. I thought he was had a superb impact on his first Test match. How do you prepare for a game against a team that you've never played against and there's less footage than other teams you play against? Um, that's a good point. But there is footage, and uh, as I said, we know we know they're going to come with the drama game, scrummaging game. Um, they actually play a bit more rugby than than what you would think. Um, so we're certainly not underestimating them in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, for me, defensively, it's uh, it's stopping the first phase, dropping that, stopping that driven line out, watching the kicking game because at the moment a lot of teams are kicking against us because of our line speed. You know, we're getting up in people's faces and they are using that kicking behind against us. And uh, it's up to us to really, really concentrate on our kick defence as well as our front line defence. Obviously. You know, missed two tackles in 110 tackles, but they did score after the effect of two chips in behind us, which we probably didn't clean up as well as we could have done. So that's what we've been working on as well this week. That was Sean Edwards with his thoughts on the Welsh team. Stay up to date with all things Welsh rugby on our YouTube page, Cardiff Union TV.